Hi everyone. So what follows is a mock interview between me and one of my lovely students, Rasai Martin. Rasai has just started his first year as an undergraduate at Lady Margaret Hall, one of the colleges at Oxford. I have nonetheless been working with him over the past year because he was part of the foundation year programme at that college. If you would like to know more about the foundation year, which is a programme set up to help people from underrepresented and underprivileged backgrounds, I'll be putting some details in the description below for you. It's a programme that has been so successful that the university has taken it on with its Foundation Oxford programme and what's known as Opportunity Oxford, both of which are geared to support people who may not have the grades that are usually required to be competitive because of various factors in their life beyond their control. So if you'd like to know more about those programmes, do please check them out. I'll put all the details below. This uh, mock interview will have some annotations from me at the bottom to explain how Rasai is doing and why he is succeeding in uh, developing his thought processes. It's a good idea if you haven't already to check out my other video on interviews, which I will link up here. And also it may be worth watching the whole video through before reading any of the annotations, otherwise it might be distracting. But anyway, I'll leave it up to you. Thanks so much for watching. All the best, bye. Cool, ready to go? Mm -hmm. Grand, right, well, uh... I'm Matt Williams. I'm the Access Fellow at Jesus College, Oxford, and this is uh, Rasai Martin. Um, I'm I, I did PPE on the foundation year last year, and I'm a PPE first year now. And I know Rasai because I was his tutor for politics last year, and he is going to be great in this mock interview that we'll be running. So, here's the question that I'd like you to try and tackle. The question is: Why is politics sometimes funny? Why is politics sometimes funny? Well, I, I guess the, the, my immediate response is uh, what makes something funny and what is, I guess, funny? Okay. Um, because humour is massively subjective. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in, in my from my perspective i think uh, politics is funny uh or, or makes us feel you know we feel feel like we should laugh at it because it's so it's so unlike normal life i think things that we find funny are stories and experiences often which are so unlike normal life um and I, so i think because politics can be dramatized uh it's quite separate from uh, normal life often um which can make it funny i guess good so you're you're trying to theorize how anything might be funny and how therefore politics would be funny, which is a very good way of doing it. I suppose part of the mystery is that some of the matters that politicians are dealing with are very serious, up to and including life and death, and yet we still find space to laugh at them and laugh at what's going on. Mm. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think we often in society, we laugh at things that make us feel uncomfortable. Um, I, I, and I think that's why people like dark humour often. Um, is because we find it uncomfortable or, you know, someone makes an uncomfortable joke or as kids, you know, we laugh at uh, fart sounds or whatever because it makes us feel uncomfortable. Uh, and I think that's the same thing in the adult world, but instead of fart sounds, it's kind of matters to do with politics, um, which we find funny, despite them being of a really serious nature. Um, we still find humour in them because they make us feel uncomfortable. And our kind of reaction instead to cry is, to laugh. Um, so. Okay, fantastic. So what's the moral side of this? In other words, do you think we should laugh at politics? Do you think we're maybe doing something that's morally reprehensible when we laugh at politics or politicians? I, I, I guess the dangerous side of laughing about politics is we can make it into jokes and we can kind of, uh, we can you know, forget that there's a real aspect to it. That, you know, this isn't someone on a stage making a joke for the sake of a joke. This is real life with real consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem when we make a joke out of these serious things, we forget about those real people and we forget about the real consequences that these decisions have on not necessarily our lives, but the lives of other people, um, which, which can lead to people getting away with things as well, politicians and us not holding them to account, um, which I think is massively a, a moral issue um, because it's immoral for someone to be able to get away with something uh, without facing any justice I guess um, mm -hmm. for it um, so I think 
the risk is that we can lead to uh, immoral situations or allow things that are immoral to kind of, uh, I guess, slide um, because we find them funny. Um, I think the perfect example is in in Boris Johnson and his leadership. You know, Boris Johnson before he became prime minister was seen a bit of you know seen as a bit of a joke, a bit of a crazy guy, a, a bit out there. You know, perfect populist leader. Um, and I think the risk uh, that has that's come about is that he's managed to get power. And I think if we are to still see him as a joke, we forget that this man is the most powerful person in our country, mm-hmm. uh, by the Queen, of course. But um, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and I think by doing that, it can allow him or allow other people like him or other situations like ones that he might be able to bring upon us uh, and uh, allow them to slide, uh, just seeing them as jokes. Yeah. Um, Okay, great, fantastic. So that's one moral dimension. Another one raised by Plato, Greek philosopher, doesn't matter if you've never heard of this theory before, but I'll I'll just explain to you briefly, is that laughter is immoral because it's a sign of us us having a superiority complex. We're laughing at the other person because we think they're weaker than we are. We're sort of proclaiming ourselves to be better. And that if only we had that political power, we would do it far more competently and far more morally than this awful, wretched human being that we are mocking. So what about that sort of mocking side of political comedy? Do you think that's potentially immoral? I guess it is, it, it, it's immoral to, to poke fun at someone as an individual, but not necessarily to poke fun at politics. Uh, so I think the, the the individual attack saying, you know, this person uh, and kind of, I guess, turning someone into a caricature. I think there's a series on BBC, um, you know, where it's uh, these different politicians and all their features are exacerbated. To, and, and to, to, you know, uh, with, with, with jokes about politics being made, but also jokes about them as individuals. So I think, you know, when we we, we poke fun and and laugh at individuals for who they are or their characteristics, what they might wear, who they might be, where they're from. I think those are the issues, but I don't think that uh, laughing at politics and thinking I can do a better job is necessarily immoral. Um, Because I can think it can, yeah. Fantastic. So you've come up with two rationales for why political comedy, satire, if you like, Mm. may be immoral. Now, when we, identify things as a society that we think are potentially immoral, then it sometimes becomes the job of lawmakers to regulate those activities. So do you think there should be laws prohibiting satire? No. (laughs) (laughs) In short, um, I don't think there should be laws inhibiting satire. Um, I think that is a blatant um, limit on freedom of speech, but also satire can be important because it allows us to, to, to hold people to account and to question them. And I think, I guess, to, to almost to argue against myself what I was saying originally, I think the usefulness, uh, the useful aspects of comedy is it can you know make a really complex topic and bring it to the average person and i think that's what satire does it makes us interested in politics so the show was referencing on bbc uh, what it can do is help loads of people to get into politics and understand politics even more than they normally would by by changing the format in which people are understanding it you know it's not some random person boring person on the news reading something out and saying this is what's going on you know it's saying what's going on but in a different way so i think uh, i i think to ban that could limit that um but also banning satire uh, i guess bans uh, an element of holding being able to hold someone to account and to verbalize that um which i think's negative i take your point about comedy is quite a good vehicle for making a complex subject more accessible. But uh, doesn't that basically mean that you're misrepresenting the phenomenon? You're taking something complex, you're making it easy to understand. And in that translation, you've stripped out all the details and therefore what people are laughing at isn't actually an accurate representation of what's really happening. I I think it's true. I think it's definitely stripped apart, but I don't necessarily think that's bad. Uh, I I think in politics in general, whoever it's covered by, uh, yeah. it will be stripped apart and parts of it will be removed uh, and that that's a problem that is definitely a problem um 
but I think if we are to say that, you know, we have to understand everything 100% fully, it, it, it's, it's, it's nearly I- impossible to do um, because we don't have the time to do that. The average person doesn't have the time to sit about and really philosophize about every single word that comes out of every single politician's mouth and every decision made. Um, so when we, you know, we pick up the news, it's a compressed uh, version of politics when we whether that be the economist to the sun you know it's a compressed version of politics and some are better than others of course that's a different problem which we're going to set aside but i think uh, comedy as well or satire um is the same thing it's a compressed version of something really complicated but it's just a different medium in, in which to to bring that to people okay fantastic now in certain media markets I think Britain and America might be examples of this, but I'll leave it up to you to just to decide whether you agree or not. Mm. Political comedy is associated with the politics of of the progressive movements. In other words, it tends to be aligned with what is sometimes described as the political left wing. Mm. Now, first of all, do you agree with that representation of, say, political comedy in Britain? And if you do agree, why do you think that might be the case that there's this coincidence between political satire and maybe more progressive politics? I think, I, I guess that's more of a, a, a societal issue to do with comedy and I guess people's views on comedy. I think the right, because of their views are, I guess, tougher uh, in, in the sense that they, they, they don't mind people poking jokes at them, I, I guess, uh, more so than the left does. I think part of the left's ideology, if I'm, you know, to personify these two sides, um, the left is more, uh, I guess the left is easily offended, um, more, more easily offended um, by jokes. So I think that's partially why jokes are tailored to, um, because there'd be more complaints, I, I, I guess. Uh, okay. That's interesting. So the left are making more jokes, but they don't have as much of a sense of humour. Is that what you're saying? It's quite ironic. Yeah, essentially. essentially. Um, okay, fine. No, fantastic. Great. That was brilliant, Rasai. Uh, I think we can leave it there. Um, thank you so much for being involved with this. Uh, we're hoping to do some more of these mock interviews in the future. You did terrifically well. Just a <laughs> note from me is to explain to the audience why that was a good performance. Fundamentally, you spoke for yourself throughout the whole thing. It's absolutely what we're looking for. I'm asking you these difficult questions and the temptation is to just say, oh yeah, I agree with that, I agree with the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, You didn't do that. When I put some things to try and challenge your positions, you you recalibrated how that might fit into your overall argument and then you came back with some new amendments. But at no point did you lose yourself. At no point were you just collapsing under the questioning and it was excellent analysis. You also... adapted to the new information I provided effectively. So I told you about a theory of comedy from Plato, assuming that you wouldn't have heard of that because it's reasonable for for undergraduates not to have heard of that. And you were able to adapt to it quickly, but also in a very precise way. So you didn't allow that to take you off the point of the topic. You stuck very closely to my questions. You weren't waffling off point. You kept in a nice sort of tight configuration, if you like, to the questions. How did you find it? Um, it was, I think it was, it was quite fun. Uh, it got more fun at, over time, but I think the r- initial question definitely <laughs> threw me off guard. Um, yeah, yeah, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting, um, but. Uh, <laughs> it, but that's quite common, right? In in mm, interviews, yeah. to sort of try and surprise you with the subject matter, to try and test your thinking skills in a domain that you won't have really tested them in before. Mm. And again, you did terrifically well. So thanks again, I really appreciate it.